Eskatos is one of the best shoot 'em ups you'll ever play in your life. From the moment you reach the Stage 3 boss and beyond, you'll be overcome with joy of blasting through endlessly creative set pieces and adrenaline-fueled gameplay, all to the tune of one of the best soundtracks in a shmup. It's out of this world, as is the entire game, and that pun is most definitely intended. It was immediately clear that Eskatos would likely become one of my top 10 favorite shmups of all time for the simple joy of it. It's everything I look for in a shooter, and as a lover of the genre, the kind of game I live for. Experiencing it for the first time put a big smile on my face, and as the levels progressed, becoming even more creative and awesome, the smile only got bigger, until I looked like the Cheshire Cat with a Jufro. My favorite aspect of the game is without a doubt its continuous nature, and how it tells a story without having to utter a single word, never breaking immersion with stage endings or score calculations. You blast off from Earth to eliminate the alien threat that's taken over the moon, and as you progress out of the atmosphere, battling the mothership in orbit, speeding toward the alien menace through space, strafing the surface of the transformed purple moon at warp speed, before finally diving into the core, Death Star style for the final encounter, it's an amazing journey that had me mesmerized from start to finish. And journey is an apt word, as if I was to describe Eskatos, I would call it the journey of shmups. If you ever played that classic on the PlayStation 3 or later consoles, you'll know what I'm talking about. Eskatos is a beautifully crafted experience that will have you in awe at the design and artistry that went into its creation. Much like Journey, it doesn't need to have the most sophisticated graphics. It's the uniqueness of the design that draws you in. And by the time you've completed the game, you'll feel like you've completed a grand space voyage. With Eskatos, I forgot I was playing an actual game, and that's the best compliment I can give. If it wasn't for the few seconds of pause that happen a few times during the half hour experience, after certain stage endings to load the next leg of the game, I would dare to call the experience perfect. One aspect of the design I love is the actual flying saucer motif, which you strangely don't see in shmups very often. It gives me that 50s War of the Worlds vibe, only amped up to Independence Day levels, with colorful motherships bursting with nodules, orbs, and glowing cores. And as you tear your way through legion after legion of spacecraft, working your way from Earth into space and the moon, the dynamic cameras always swooping and panning, and approaching the big bats from various angles. Eskatos is dramatic in its presentation and a big part of what makes the experience so cinematic. And to its credit, those moments when you're flying into the screen and see your ship from a different angle, it eases off on the difficulty and is simply a fun transition between set pieces, while maintaining the gameplay to keep you involved. If you didn't notice, the music in this game is phenomenal. It fits the breakneck pace perfectly, and while more modern and electronic, has incredibly catchy tunes that will stay in your head long after playing. It never devolves into the repetitive beats and club-style music that's so common in games these days. And as you destroy the mothership in orbit, watching it collapse below, the camera swoops into the next leg of your journey. Music transitions into a dreamy space synth with 80s beats as you travel toward the moon, later pulling off the coolest homage to space invaders that I've seen in a game. This is one soundtrack you may be picking up if you fall in love with the game like I did. It's one of the best you'll ever hear.
Eschatos consists of 24 mini-stages, divided up into what come across more like chapters, with Chapter 1 leaving Earth, 3 up in the atmosphere battling the mothership, 4 blasting through space toward the moon, and 5 the assault on the surface, along with the final encounter. You may see the game referred to as Danmaku, aka Bullet Hell, in some reviews, but it's nothing of the sort. It doesn't play anything like one in my mind, and is more similar to a fast-paced PC Engine shooter, mixed with the Rayforce games of the later 90s. While it looks like there's a lot of bullets on screen, you're armed with a nifty front shield that absorbs anything in front of you. So in Eschatos, you aren't slowly weaving through dense patterns, trying to memorize how to maneuver through them, but simply avoiding what you can and activating your shield through areas that seem a bit too tight. It's a key part of the gameplay and makes all of it feel less overwhelming than it looks, as you can also use your shield to plow through most incoming fire and use it as an offensive weapon. It's a key part of the gameplay and makes all of it feel less overwhelming than it looks. You have two types of shots, a powerful forward shot and a wide, and holding down both also activates the shield, so it's easy to do at a moment's notice. While the shield is active, you can't fire thus the strategy. You also have speed levels, but I honestly felt that setting it at max and leaving it there was the way to go. Everything in this game is fast, and it creates a great sense of speed. Eschatos was developed by Qt and the first in a trilogy of games that eventually continued with Ginga Force and Natsuki Chronicles, recently released on PS4 and Steam. And they did a wonderful job in making this game accessible for anyone, while also deep for advanced players. It has a progression system not used often in shmups, where it unlocks more credits, lives, stage selects, and all sorts of extra features the more you play, encouraging you to practice and improve. It may seem difficult at first, but knowing that just playing one or two more times will unlock more credits and lives that you can use to progress farther and see more of the game keeps you going. It uses your score from each playthrough to unlock more features and within a couple hours you should already have a few credits and an extra life or two to play with. It also features three modes, each with multiple difficulty settings. In original, your ship is always powered up and item drops simply clear the screen. Simple and easy. Advanced mode is the same game, but deeper, adding power-ups to the mix along with much bigger scoring opportunity. Using your shield to absorb bullets now converts them into points, and the more your ship is powered up, the less shield you're given. So it's a give and take of how powered up you want to be versus the use of your shield and picking up the F screen clearing bombs now drops your power level by one, allowing you to manage it as you play. Finally, you have a time attack mode where you have no lives at all. Dying removes time from the clock, while completing sections adds to it to see how far you can go before running out of time. Much like a caravan, the faster you kill enemies, the faster more appear. And if you manage to complete the game, all your extra time left over is converted into points for a final score. It's actually fun as heck, and I'm surprised more games like this don't have the option, as it's great for a quick play to see how far you can get before you run out of time, just like playing the old arcade racing games. Everything I'm saying boils down to one thing. Play Eschatos. Play Eschatos. Just play Eschatos. Hauser, a fellow shmupper and Eschatos extraordinaire, has been drilling this into my head for months as it's his all-time favorite shmup, and I was so busy with other games and reviews, I just couldn't get to it. So now that I have, I'm making it official. Hauser, you were right. This game is amazing. Even the giant purple space dildos didn't disappoint, and after already dodging tea bags last week with cotton, I guess there was no way to go but up. I think we need to make that a menu item at the Eschatos Cafe. 
MKI's famous space dildos. Bet you can't eat just one. But I digress. Eschatos deserves to be mentioned in the top shmups list worldwide, as I had more fun with it than I had any right to for just a couple hours of play, and I'll be playing it a lot more. If you ever have advanced questions about the game, or play it yourself and want to drop Hauser a line and tell him how much you enjoyed it, you can find him here on Twitter. And if you want a more in-depth video to sink your teeth into the long-running and staple of shmups on YouTube channel, Bullet Heaven has an in-depth review with much more detail. You can check that out after this video via a link in my description. It's one of very few games that with over 300 reviews published, they gave a perfect score. For my part, I just want to tell the world or anyone that will listen this one thing. Play Eschatos. Feeling down? Play Eschatos. Not feeling like gaming tonight? Take two Eschatos and call me in the morning. An Eschatos a day keeps the doctor away. Play Eschatos. Seriously. Just play Eschatos. So who is this Amkai? How did he come to make Eschatos with developer Cute? And what inspired him to expand his design from more traditional, fast-paced shooters to his most recent games we'll look at next, Ginga Force on Xbox 360, and more recently, Natsuki Chronicles on Xbox One, now released on PS4 and Steam. How did he come to make such an amazing game? Was it dumb luck? Hardly. MKI started programming for the MSX during the 90s with a fondness for RPGs and STGs, his first two shooting games being Kyokugen and Pleasure Hearts. A pair of vertical and horizontal shooters, they had some of the more impressive visuals, cool music, and furious gameplay that you could find on the MSX. Pretty impressive for someone making their first games, and in the case of Kyokugen, started working on it in high school. Not only that, this game had cutscenes. Hey, did she just stomp and smash a PlayStation to summon a giant mech? <laughs> cool. MKI was late to the game, and the MSX was long in the tooth by the time he made these games, mid to late 90s. He wanted to switch to a more powerful platform that would find his next games a larger audience. And as it turned out, the Wonder Swan handheld was his system of choice, which has the distinction of being one of the only handhelds to this day prior to the Switch that had vertical scrolling, which means shooters could be programmed and played in Tate. It also explains those little Wonder Witch homages in Eschatos for point bonuses throughout the game, as Wonder Witch was a dev kit for the Wonder Swan, developed by none other than Cute. Cute doesn't just make games, but actually runs their primary business in technology consultancy. See how this all comes together? And this is where Eschatos truly began with its two predecessor games, Judgment Silver Sword and Cardinal Sins. MKI programmed Judgment Silver Sword to enter into the WWGP contest and in 2001 took home the grand prize. It was considered a technical marvel for its time and an entry point into his relationship with Cute as they later published and released the game for the Wonderswan Color in 2004, the original cart now selling for high prices online. Just one look at some of these early screens and you can see the DNA for Eschatos, like the space mirrors shooting out very similar patterns, and the golden owl boss from stage 5, and of course the fabulous space dildos that were just too good not to make a comeback. Cardinal Sins, more than anything, shows MKI's penchant for thinking outside the box and creating unusual shooting games that are completely experimental. It subverts most of what you'd expect in a shmup by giving you specific goals to achieve on every level, each stage reflecting one of the seven deadly sins. 
whether it's collecting enough extends without destroying them, to gluttony where the goal is to collect as much as possible. It's a goal-based shmup with each stage being unique and having to be played a different way. Eschatos was the result of MKI having a more powerful platform with the Xbox 360 as well as the team at Q, and together they developed and published the game. Both Judgment Silver Sword and Cardinal Sin were available as part of the Eschatos release on Xbox 360 and are now also available on Steam as a complete pack. Which brings us to the Experimental Ginga Force. If Eschatos was the journey of shmups, Ginga Force is the Gran Turismo. Instead of building on the formula that rocked so many worlds with Eschatos, maybe smartly, MKI chose not to try and improve on perfection, but make something completely different. And how much you enjoy it will depend on what you look for in a shmup. Some will love it and get an enormous amount of playtime and enjoyment, as it has more content and replayability than near anything in the genre. Others looking for a simple and easy pick up and play experience that they can jump right into may be frustrated with the slower, methodical, campaign-like approach. But one way or another, you have to give him credit, as he decided on an idea and went all out with it. It has many RPG-like elements baked into the structure of the game that you rarely see in the genre. Not surprising, with RPGs being one of his favorite. But Ginga Force isn't like an RPG because of its upgrade system, playing through stages and slowly unlocking new weapons and items to bolster your ship. Nor is it like one because progressing through certain levels, you need to have unlocked and equipped the right combination of weapons and items to play it most efficiently. It's not even like an RPG because of the long and involved story, regularly told through dialogue during the intro of every stage and throughout the entire level as you play. All of these things are true, some of which are great additions and give it a longevity and depth. But that's not the real reason Ginga Force feels like a mix of Gran Turismo and an RPG, at least to me, as there are plenty of games with story, upgrades, and weapon loadouts, even action games that don't feel like extended affairs. They simply have those elements. Ginga Force feels like playing Gran Turismo because it's a slow burn. It's not a game you just jump into like an arcade racer, but one that takes time to learn, unlock much more interesting features, and then work on replaying and improving each stage of the game. It starts out with humble beginnings, a very basic ship, and teaching you the ropes. There's no grand opening space battle or epic storyline, but just you and a partner cruising the city for small-time junk missions to take out low-level criminals. If you want to get to the good stuff, if you want to see what the game really has in store, how much fun various weapon combinations can be, and get to use cool upgrades, you have to earn it through trial and error, through learning, and through some grinding. That's what makes Ginga Force, Ginga Force. And that's why I said some people will adore it, while others may be turned off by elements to a shmup that's not their bag. What Ginga Force does exceptionally well is presentation. The stages are very unique, and well-crafted, each playing like a set piece in of itself and taking you through an entire plot line by the time the boss is defeated. The music is also very inspired, and most of the tracks make each stage stand out. There's not a dud in the bunch across the levels, and all have an electronic vibe while maintaining an identity and never devolving into repetitive beats. Whether you're chasing down a runaway missile trying to destroy it before it reaches its target, or following a burrowing drill through rock as it tries to escape and destroy you. There's almost always something interesting going on with every stage, and it always ties into the story in one way or another, with good music to back it up. 
and a late game stage boss is an important part of the story that sets up the following game in the series, Natsuki Chronicles, which we'll be looking at next. Ginga Force also executes each stage with deep gameplay that puts your skills to the test from the very start. The amount of primary, secondary, special weapons and other ship upgrades is extensive, with meters as you play for all three that need to be managed and recharged. Don't be fooled by the easy, normal and hard mode on the stage select screen as this game has no truly easy or novice mode. Ginga Force is a hard game. Easy is like the first loop of a normal game, with normal feeling closer to a second, and hard is exceptionally brutal, and they're meant to be played in that order. Just like I mentioned with Gran Turismo, the whole point is to work your way through the easy mode, unlocking upgrades and more levels, and once you've mastered it and upgraded your ship, move on to normal, then hard and you won't get to see some of the best stuff, the coolest upgrades, and have the most rockin' ship until you've taken the time to grind through the game, stage by stage, and made it to hard. Getting everything out of Ginga Force takes time and someone who wants to suss out every bit of gameplay. If I had to rate the presentation, music, and gameplay, they'd all get top scores. The fun factor of upgrading your ship and unlocking new items is great. Aside from bullets sometimes being difficult to notice among some fast moving and intricate backdrops, resulting in some cheap deaths, there aren't any specific negatives I could levy against it, but it's a game you need to be prepared for. When you buy Gran Turismo, you know exactly why and what you're getting into, but with a shmup, there's a certain expectation, and in many aspects, Ginga Force may not meet them. It's experimental. From what I've shown so far, you likely already know if this is a game you can't wait to dig into or that you just don't have the time for. It's not made to 1cc. There's no such thing. It's meant to shoot for top rankings on every stage, on every difficulty, and enjoy the process of upgrading and trying different combos, grinding and improving in each one, finding that perfect combination of upgrades and mastering each level until you can play it perfectly. And if you're into an involved story with lots of characters, twists and turns, Ginga Force produces there as well. And if you're looking for a serious challenge to boot, then Ginga Force may be exactly what you're looking for. It'll likely be many dozens of hours that you can sink your teeth into and money well spent. There are some features I would have liked, like a non-story arcade mode where you can just play through the stages without the dialogue and exposition. If you don't speak Japanese, good luck catching what they're saying while trying to dodge bullets anyway. You're best off recording your gameplay and going back later to read the subtitles. And if the chatter gets annoying after repeated play, you can turn the voices off in the menu. Playing Ginga Force was a first experience for me. I've played through most of it on the first loop and tried a bit of the second, but there's much more to explore. It's such a deep game with so many mechanics that anything but a deep dive isn't doing it justice, which requires many more hours of playtime. So if this whets your appetite, I'll point you again to Bullet Heaven and their review of the game for an even more detailed look at the mechanics and scoring. And if it's not your bag, and you want something you can quickly jump into and enjoy anytime, right away, well, play Eskatos. Did I happen to mention play Eskatos? Speaking of games you can jump in and play quickly, Natsuki Chronicles has your back. The latest cute release, it takes the Ginga Force formula and streamlines it for a much wider audience. Natsuki has something for everyone, and thanks to Hauser and his connections with Cute, he was able to get us a free download code for the PlayStation 4, 
So stay tuned for the end of this segment and the secret code and comment for a chance to win. Originally released on Xbox One and now recently on PS4 and Steam, Natsuki Chronicles looks like a horizontal version of Ginga Force. And in some ways, it is. But it's more than that. It's a streamlined, more accessible, easily picked up and played shmup that has something for everyone. First and foremost, unlike Ginga Force, Natsuki also has a proper arcade mode that you can jump into no frills and start blowing stuff up. As unique as Ginga Force was, I was only able to scratch the surface given my limited time to play it. With Natsuki, you now have a choice whether to play the game straight up like a traditional shooter or the story mode where you again get to unlock, upgrade, and experiment to your heart's content. But Natsuki Chronicles has learned a thing or two since Ginga Force and in my opinion, for the better. Aside from the aforementioned arcade mode, the story mode is now far more flexible and accessible. For starters, the easy mode is actually, well, you guessed it, easy. Now someone that isn't confident playing difficult shmups actually can make a lot of progress and learn. In fact, instead of having completely separate trees for the difficulty levels, Natsuki now lets you change it on the fly. So if you start it on normal and halfway through the game, it becomes a bit much, you can continue to play on easy and see certain levels through, then come back to them on normal later. Another thing Natsuki does is reward you well for playing. Ginga Force only handed out extra lives after killing enough enemies. Natsuki flips that and not only hands out decent credits and experience for failing, but also adds to your shield for every time or two that you've played the level. Play it four to five times and you'll have a few extra hits that you can take before your shield starts to deplete. So no matter your skill level, you'll feel like if you persist, it's only a matter of time before the game hands you enough bonuses to squeeze through. Whether you're playing on easy or hard, the rewards are plentiful. Also unlike Ginga Force, which will likely frustrate all but experienced players, I can easily recommend Natsuki to beginners, as not only will you still be able to enjoy the game, but it'll do a good job teaching you important skills and improving your game overall. And if you're a millennial, it'll give you a pat on the back for doing your best and make the next time you try a bit easier. Another interesting thing Natsuki does is provide you with bullet trajectory of the major threats with red lines that show exactly where they're going and will end up. It's a really neat idea and one I haven't seen in any other games. But in practice, I personally found they made things more difficult to see and avoid. If you're new to shmups, I can see them giving you an idea of how bullets travel and where to expect them when learning. I found them distracting on anything but easy mode, with so many bullets flying around and made things harder to dodge. So I turned off that feature for myself, which is why you don't see much of it in the gameplay. But the fact it's there shows Cute is experimenting with new ideas and ways to make the game more accessible for a variety of players. And if you're already playing on normal or beyond, you most likely don't need it displayed anyway. The production values in Natsuki Chronicles are on par with Ginga Force, with updated visuals given it was released a console generation later, though not quite as scripted and elaborate. Moving to a horizontal shooter eliminated one of my complaints from the first game. In Natsuki, I not once had an issue making out bullets, knowing what needs to be avoided, or had to work harder to focus on what to dodge. Everything is very clear and never in question. Another improvement was the slightly less exposition heavy stages with moments of dead space. So replaying stages to learn them and grind for levels and credits didn't feel like a chore, at least not as much. In general, 
Natsuki is a more streamlined story mode with improved quality of life features that remove some of the more chore-like and demanding aspects of Ginga Force. Of course, that's not to say the challenge isn't there, as hard mode and beyond become serious business and something I definitely would need quite a bit more time with to explore. And while the story isn't quite as creative or characters as interesting as in Ginga Force, there's a moment later in the game that replays a scenario from a different perspective and effectively changes how you thought things went down in the original, making for a very thoughtful twist to the original story. As Natsuki Chronicles is based on Ginga Force, only with the events seen from her perspective. Ginga Force gave you weapons that protected your rear, but there wasn't too often a need to use them. Not the case in Natsuki Chronicles, as a large portion of the weapon loadouts are rear firing, and some stages have even more enemies attacking from behind than in front, so playing around with the upgrades and arsenal can turn a difficult stage into a much easier one. Add to that the ability to use your shield as an offensive weapon and fire it out in various directions and you have a game that favors aggressive play. You can also adjust your speed settings in the menu so you can tailor your ship to be as fast or slow as you like without having to grind for upgrades to do it. Novice players should find the easy mode manageable and fun, while experts will likely finish normal without much difficulty and find that the hard mode and even more lethal extra mode is where the game begins to shine for them. Compare that to Ginga Force where even the easy mode may quickly become too frustrating for beginners with progress feeling too slow. People often ask me to recommend a good shmup for beginners to learn, and I can comfortably say Natsuki Chronicles belongs in that category. Arcade mode also has difficulty levels, but completely eliminates any grinding or upgrades. Instead, traditional weapon power-ups appear throughout the levels to pick up, and it plays like most any other traditional shooter. What's nice though, is like Eskatos, it rewards you for playing and practicing. The first time you play, you'll get no continues, but attempt the arcade mode a few times, and you'll have a couple credits unlocked to continue and make some more progress as you learn. Keep playing, and you'll rack up quite a few, and if you want to practice specific stages, well that's what story mode is for, and once you're comfortable, you can go back to arcade and try it again. Music in Natsuki is also excellent, and despite me enjoying the Ginga Force beats, speaks more to my older school preferences. Some of the tracks sound like a modernized version of 16-bit tunes and something from Mega Man X or similar. I actually like them even more than Ginga Force, as good as it was. I also want to make special mention of the menu and timeline music, which is straight up Mass Effect and made me want to play that again every time I heard it. Until I remember how they completely flubbed the ending and they're still in the doghouse with me. So I'll just get my kicks here in the menu. Being a horizontal game, Natsuki gives off a bit of that Thunder Force vibe from the faster scrolling stages and weapons. But Natsuki mixes up its gameplay with varying types of stages. The gameplay speed is not as breakneck, and most stages are designed around thoughtful use of your weapons, and plenty of slower paced scrolling, with some sections feeling more in the vein of R-Type, requiring some memorization of stage hazards and proper weapon choice, though not nearly as difficult, at least not yet, as I hear the hard and extra mode get pretty insane. So it's kind of a bit of everything mixed along with some bullet help, especially the harder settings. Overall, Natsuki Chronicles is a very good game, and while different from Ginga Force, also an evolution that I think will appeal to more players as a whole. Natsuki Chronicles really is and feels like a perfect console shooter. <laughs> So 
So what do I think of this trilogy and my first time playing cute games in general? It's hard not to be impressed with what this small developer and MKI have done. Without a doubt, Eskatos is a masterpiece. I'm sure there's someone out there that doesn't like the game. Just like there's someone out there that doesn't like Thunder Force, or Ice Cream, or Sex. In all cases, there's someone that can't be trusted, so keep your eye on them, as they're likely up to no good. Eskatos is a game any fan of shmups must play. It's what I like to call a lightning in a bottle game, much like Thunder Force, Soldier Blade, Musha, and a handful of others, where everything just comes together perfectly. And it's not only the best of the genre, but it transcends it. These games will be loved and remembered above the rest. Describing Ginga Force and Natsuki Chronicles is more complex as they aren't simple, pure experiences like Eskatos. They're wonderfully made with a lot of care and attention to detail, and so packed with content and new gameplay to unlock that they almost feel like a shmup hybrid. While they may not be as quickly adrenaline pumping as Eskatos, they have a longevity that's well implemented and will keep you playing for dozens of hours, trying to unlock and enjoy everything. Natsuki takes what Ginga Force started and makes it more approachable and enjoyable for a much larger audience and feels like a stepping stone to something even bigger. And I can easily see something like Natsuki Chronicles being a part of an even larger game with other elements, integrating the story and great shooting stages and deep gameplay with another genre that could more easily bring in a new audience and gamers. And of course, it would need an option once unlocked to simply play and enjoy the shooting sections on their own, just as Natsuki already does correctly. And although I look forward to seeing what Cute does next, especially given MKI's love of RPGs, I'm getting ahead of myself. Taken on their own, both Ginga Force and Natsuki Chronicles are very good games, as they are. If you enjoy games like UN Squadron on Super Famicom and the ability to grind and upgrade, these games are a gradual extension of those ideas. Only if the dude that sells you stuff at the shop wouldn't stop chattering with you while you're trying to play, which would be kind of funny actually, as he always looked halfway to being stoned off his ass. That'd make for some pretty funny dialogue. For me personally, playing all three games for the first time these last couple weeks was a treat. Not only did I discover what's now one of my top 10 shmups that I've ever played, but also two fun and unique games in Ginga Force and Natsuki Chronicles, of which I'd like to spend more time with and dig into. And more importantly, got me thinking about what I'd personally like to see the genre evolve into. If you thought any of these games were cool, you can find Natsuki Chronicles on PS4 and Steam. In addition, Steam has a combo pack for a slight discount for both games, if you buy them together. And don't forget, if you want to get a chance to win a free copy of Natsuki Chronicles on PS4, make sure to leave a comment with the secret code for an entry. Ready? Cute Natsuki for me! Oh, and before I forget, one last thing. Have you played Eskatos? No? Then go play Eskatos. Get it on Steam, find it for the Xbox 360. Just play Eskatos. Heck, play all three like I did. But definitely play Eskatos.